Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, Pinkerton and Concept tease a new folder. I'll show you something exquisite from Carter Cutlery and a baker's dozen drop points that have won my heart. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week uh, was a simple one. I have a lot of great comments, uh, but this one just sort of encapsulated the whole reason uh why I do this. Basically, uh, Matt Harvey said, you sounded like a kid at Christmas, odd and excited. Very cool knife. He was talking about my unboxing of the awesome Finch Buffalo Tooth uh, that I haven't really parted with since I got it. But uh, really, that's the feeling I get. First of all, uh, unboxing videos are like that. You don't know exactly what's in it oftentimes. So it's sort of exciting uh, to bring someone along uh, as you as you open the box. Uh, but also just feeling so excited about a new knife and then finding it to be something uh, special that you weren't necessarily expecting uh, to be that awesome. So um, Matt Harvey, uh, thanks for the comment and thank you one and all for the views and for the comments. Uh, They're all greatly appreciated. Um, before we get to a pocket check, uh, I do want to get through this 600 plus funniest dads uh, dad jokes. And so we're going to, you know, we're going to eat the elephant one bite at a time. And tonight I have to say to the guy who invented zero. Thanks for nothing. All right. That's I mean, to me, that's comedy. Anything more than that is too complicated for my old man mind uh, to comprehend. So uh, pocket check today. Today was a was in different was kind of different. Uh and uh, why do I say that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But just uh, sort of an unexpected combo as I was leaving. And, and they were all great to have on me. Uh, today, I had the Microtech SOCOM Bravo in my front right pocket. This thing is really, really cool. Uh, the, the history of the Bravo as I know it, uh, the SOCOM Bravo is a very, very uh, uh, limited, exclusive, limited uh, in-house production that they would do of the SOCOM line, but it fancified like this with bolsters and carbon fiber and special builds and special blades with fullers and cool clips, uh, appropriately, properly oriented, uh, unlike the Elite. Um, so just a storied sort of blade, but a very expensive one uh, for Microtech to manufacture. I think it, it, it took retooling a lot of the factory and so they decided to outsource this and they looked uh to the east and uh went with reich knives and we know reich knives for their really complicated builds and complicated sculptural milling uh very cool knives uh not exactly my style uh, most of the time at least those that come under their own shingle uh are a lot of them to me are really really cool but like i said not my style they almost look like proof of concept knives just to show that they can they can sculpt a knife that looks like an insect uh, they'll do it or or something like that just not my my type of thing uh, but i have massive respect for it especially after having this uh, this is such uh just a really really great knife uh carbon fiber again um in this case it's a twill and i rather like it i love the shape of this bolster that's of course titanium Got a nice little pivot collar there. Uh, the spine of this knife is so appealing. You have jimping, you have you have milling, milled grooves going both side to side and front to back. So you get this really great texture uh, all along the spine, but especially on that thumb ramp. I mean, you are just so locked in in a saber grip like this. And then this, of course, is the clip point blade. They also have the Tonto. Both are beautiful, but since I have the SOCOM Elite in Tonto, I decided I would go for the clip. Once this became available, for a long time, I would have taken whatever uh, I could have gotten, um, which none of the combinations are bad. They have three. They have this, the Tonto, and then the Tonto with serrations, all, all equally acceptable in my book. But uh, I'm glad I have the clip point. 
just to round round things out a little bit. Really nice action on this, though I have found that this T20 Torx bit on the one side keeps loosening up. So I do not have a T20. I've been putting a uh, uh, a hex in there that, that fits nicely and just very gently tightening it. I just have to get in there with some uh, blue Loctite, and I want to get a legitimate uh, 20 um, uh, uh, Torx T20 Torx bit before I really crank it down. Uh, but when you do tighten it, you still have that same smooth, awesome bearing action. Just a beautiful knife. And I'm so glad it became available enough for me to get. They are also now uh, having Reich, uh, they meaning Microtech is now also having Reich do the Annex, which is such a such a cool knife. And when you look at it, it's got a big broad blade, sort of a clip point blade, uh, but with a very th uh, relatively thin handle um or shallow or short handle but it's integral uh so very exciting it's a cool and exotic looking knife but also tactical and also an integral uh i don't have an integral so who knows maybe that'll be my first one maybe i'll chase one down uh next on um, on me today uh for for usage and this is the only thing that got use like real use on me today was the laid back jack by uh, Jack Wolf knives, one of my uh, favorite of theirs. But I mean, you know, there's five of them so far, and I know a sixth one is on the way. Uh, and I say they're all my favorites, and they kind of are. But I've always loved the Swayback Jack. That's that curved back handle. Uh, this one is a little reduced compared to some of the other ones I have, uh, thanks to Ben Belkin's uh, expert designing. And then this one's got that nice M390 blade, fully full height hollow ground M390 blade, very thin, very slicey, and this one very, very pointy. Uh, just an awesome little utility knife. Not so little, uh, but just an awesome knife. This with the black micarta now beginning to patina. Uh, that is all legitimate through legitimate use. Sometimes I hasten the patina, um, whether it's on a 1095 blade or on micarta. Sometimes I just can't wait or just want the whole thing a uniform uh, dark. Not in this case. This this time I'm going uh, I'm going totally uh, natural. Okay, for emotional support today, I had this was a surprising one, but it was uh, one that I just grabbed because I'd been thinking about it. Uh, the Kaiser inversion. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design. First of all, look at that really cool terraced uh, concentric pattern uh, on the titanium here. Um, gives you really good grip, but it's also just pleasing to the eye. Um, you open it up and oh, whoa, uh, uh, it looks inverted. It looks like the blade is facing the wrong direction or is put on the handle backwards. Uh, but indeed, this is a sort of a Picall style, not, a, not even a sort of a, this is a Picall style knife. This is intended to be held in uh, this reverse grip with the blade pointed uh, down uh, with the tip, I mean, with the edge pointed in uh, for defensive uh, type uses like this and uh, a lot of gross motor motion. You say, but why in such a classy package? Why would they make such a, 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 a grim and gruesome tool in such a beautiful package? Well, it just so happens that the Kaiser inversion, Pickall style uh, self-defense, luxury edc if you will uh is also an awesome utility knife i mean look at look at it like this if you hold it like a regular knife um you get great tip uh orientation <coughs> excuse me orientation for draw cuts and pull cuts and all sorts of utility cuts where you're using the tip uh cutting into boxes or cutting rope or cutting straps or whatever it is uh this backward facing blade makes for an excellent uh oh you know if you if you whether you have it facing backward or forward it makes an excellent utility knife so this this is uh you know it's 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 a stylish version of a really nasty weapon but uh really you're gonna get a lot of utility out of this knife uh the inversion very cool knife i, I know they did a black wash version of it at some point uh but this one oh and by the way it also comes it ships with two thumb studs, one rather large like this, so you can open it up on your pocket seam and sort of wave it open. 
this is my pocket check. This is what I was carrying today. Let me know what you were carrying today and uh, fill me with some ideas. What are these things? What are these knives I need to get next? Um, before we move on to the rest of the show, I have a, a couple of really cool knives in from our good friend at Jock's Knives uh, on Instagram. Uh, he's over there in Great Britain. Sometimes he buys knives over on uh, this side of the world, and uh, I check them out. I live with them for a little while, make videos, check them out, show them off, talk about them, and then send them over to him. It's a, it's a, it's a nice little thing. Excuse me, nice little arrangement there. And I have a couple to send over, um, and two of these, uh, they're both very, very cool. But one of them, I'll, I'll show you this first one. I thought maybe, geez, was this a late night order that I don't remember? Like, was I? out of my mind late at night and I ordered this thing and uh, I must have. And, and I just sort of looked around and uh, looked at all my emails and I, I even went to Blade HQ and logged in to see it, to check my purchase history, <laughs> not trusting myself. Um, and no, indeed, I, I hadn't ordered it. it. It turns out Jock had ordered this for his wife and somehow I missed it. Uh, so here it is. This is a cool little thing. This is the Civivi Elementum Dessert Warrior Edition, Blade HQ um, exclusive. You got that beautiful, uh, uh, what is that? That's like a robin's egg blue Cerakote um, to be like some sort of a glaze. And then you've got the yellow liners and the pink top with the little sprinkles and the purple pivot. I mean, it's really... A charming knife. I mean, for a minute there, for a minute, I thought it was mine. I was like, yeah, I must have ordered this. Like, that was a good idea because these are probably going to be worth something, you know. <laughs> and uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't me. Uh, so this is not mine. But uh, who knows? Maybe there's a, an elementum in the future for me uh, after all. Uh, so there's this one and then another one I knew was coming. This is awesome. Actually, this is so worth the hype it was getting a few years back. Um, and this is my first experience of it. This is this is my first experience of it. And it is the second uh, version or iteration, I guess, or run uh, by these guys. This is the North Arm Knives Skaha. And wow. Whoa, this thing is really really well built i mean it is I, i'm gonna say this without reservation the smoothest knife on on you know the smoothest flipper i've ever experienced uh bar none including the koenig areas that i checked out at uh blade show i don't, I don't know if this does it justice but it, it it's um it's comically smooth it's almost you know it's almost too smooth very thinly ground blade. So nice. I got to say, this is a this is another one that you really benefit from having in hand and seeing in person. Um, I was not I was kind of underwhelmed by the design of it when it was first out and people were raving about it. But the people that I really trust uh, for their opinions on knives were saying it was great. So I should have just gone with trusting them because, oh, my God, this thing is amazing. This is an amazing knife. I'm going to do a close-up video of it and then release it and send it over to Jock. Uh, but it's the, the smoothness is is unreal. And then the release of the of the um, detent is almost feels two stage, but so close. The two stage is so close that it's one. I don't know. It's really, really, really hard for me to explain. But that's just the way it feels. This is so beautiful. This and the handle, the contouring of the handle, it is so comfortable. Uh, so, Jock, very nice purchase here. Uh, North Arms, not North Arm Knives, uh, father and son team up in Canada. I, I know their real bread and butter is kitchen knives, but they need to do this more too because this is these are just insane. So very nice purchases. Jock, thank you so much for letting me check these out. I appreciate it. Uh, I never really probably would have gotten my hands on the Skaha without you, sir. So it's greatly appreciated. Uh, if you like the show, you appreciate the show, and maybe you want to help support it, 
uh, or see at least uh, what what patrons are uh, are getting, uh, go over to Patreon and check out our three levels of support. We got three tiers of support. Uh, they include knife giveaways and exclusive material, whether it's exclusive interview material or uh, you get to see me sometimes get uh, beat up by my buddy Ian. I got some more videos like that to upload uh, and then um, lots of other good stuff. So uh, go over to Patreon and check it out. Uh, quickest way to do that is to go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Speaking of Dirk Pinkerton, as I was with the Kaiser Inversion, uh, he has another knife coming out with Concept. Uh, that's a great, that's a great combination. I mean, you know, him, uh, Pinkerton uh, with Concept and with Kaiser and with Beyond EDC and uh, other companies. He's just, he's knocking it out of the park with all of his designs and they're, uh, he does not have one specific style, but I feel like they're all they they're all his style. Here's this new one that he's teasing. They're teasing with concept. Now this is a titanium frame lock folder in two different tantos. Uh, the upper uh, model there in the black and the black wash is a more Americanized tanto. You'll you see the faceted tip with the uh, secondary sort of sub tip down there. I can't remember what the name for that is. And then the one down below is more of a traditional Eastern style Tanto, something more traditional to Japanese, something uh, to Japan, something that may have been carried in the sleeve of a kimono and only pulled out to shiv, uh, you know, or vanquish your foe, we'll say. Uh, not sure about the steel yet. They haven't announced that or even kind of when it's coming out. But I have to say, I do like the look of the flipper and also having the um, the fuller there for uh, middle finger flicking. Uh, you know, I do like that style of uh, knife openage. Uh, here you see it in hand in, in presumably Dirk Pinkerton's hand. And, and with this blade style, the Eastern Tonto, it reminds me of something, and I can't think exactly what it is. Maybe an early Riot, uh, like around the hills, or one of those um, knives in the early Riot. I don't know. Whatever it is, I think it's beautiful. And I think uh, Dirk Pinkerton, I, I love his designs. I, and I also love that he does, uh, with his custom work, he makes custom affordable uh, custom fixed blade knives that are exquisite and they are oftentimes modeled on ethnographic weapons. I love that. All right. So that's uh, coming up in 2023. Uh, new Tonto coming from Pinker uh, Dirk Pinkerton and Concept Knives. Next up, the one, this was surprising to me, actually, the one hatchet or axe in the K-Bar lineup. Well, it's out now and it's uh, it's got a... Uh, uh, it's got a surprising blade seal. It's called the Hatchet Hawk. Kind of an on-the-nose name, but hey, man, you know, whatever. I, you only have so many uh, instances or in, uh, seconds to make an impression, and uh, Hatchet Hawk says it all. Is it a hatchet? Is it a tomahawk? It's thin, kind of like a tomahawk, but it's a... Uh, it's also like a hatchet meant to do a lot of robust work after after hours of being humped into the bush. So, yes, like I said before, this is the one axe in their lineup right now, uh, hatchet type thing. And it's got a 4.75 inch blade. And check this out. This was an odd choice, I thought. What do you think? It's 5CR15 MOV. 5CR15 MOV. Now, that's, I think that's the blade steel that came on my, uh, my Walmart version minimalist. Like, not the most robust steel, but, uh, Ben Schwartz over at Knife News uh, does address that and says it's not great for edge life, 
but it is a very impact resistant and stain resistant steel. So I guess with the right geometry, uh, anything can be done, right? With the right geometry, uh, you've got something impact and stain resistant. Maybe this actually is the right solution for a cheap under $100, I shouldn't call it cheap, an inexpensive sub $100 hatchet. Um, I think it's kind of handsome. I, I I definitely like the pommel area. That looks like it's gonna uh, stay in your hand really, really well. I, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind checking that out. It looks like a pretty cool, uh, pretty nice little hatchet thing. But you know, so many hatchets, so little time and money uh, these days. So you know, maybe maybe this one. You know, maybe this one will have to wait. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection. Uh, those are some new knives uh, in my possession, some of which are going to be given away, some of which are going to be auctioned away, and others I am keeping. Mine, all mine. And then uh, we're going to look at some drop points that have won my heart. Recent, recent acquisitions. And I'm like, wow, I'm always talking about how boring drop points are. And yet I, I, I keep buying them. So we're going to take a look at those right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so this first one comes to me from Murray Carter of Carter Cutlery. If you listen to the podcast, uh, the interview show, which I'm sure you do, if you listen into this one, you probably listen to that one because that's that's the interesting show. Uh, and uh, we just spoke with Murray Carter, uh, but if you didn't listen to the show, Here's the quick and dirty. He's a, a Canadian guy who had a fascination with Japan, uh, went over there at 18, started uh, apprenticing, and after five years and then some more time became basically the village bladesmith. Not basically, he became the village bladesmith uh, at the 420th year of that position and the 17th generation. So this guy learned bladesmithing. Um, in Japan and does it all. Now he's uh, in Idaho and uh, makes amazing knives for Car at Carter Cutlery. And um, this is one of them. And it's, he does, he uses all old Japanese techniques. This is his neck knife model. And uh, it has really nice carbon fiber. It's extremely sharp, but I want to show off this end of the, of the knife first. So I'm going to leave it in the sheath because I don't trust myself with it. It's so sharp. But this handle, uh, it's a it's a taper tang. So as it comes towards the pommel, the tang gets thinner. And then it's got G10 liners, uh, like three stacks of three G10 liners. And then this beautiful, smoothly rounded and contoured uh, red carbon fiber. It's got a mosaic pin in the center. Just, oh my gosh, it feels, it's like, uh, it feels better to have it in your hand than not, in a way. It just feels so good. Great sheath, really awesome sheath. I, I like the way he used these rivets instead of grommets uh, for other types of attachments. Like you have no choice if you want to use this sheath. It's a neck knife buster. Uh, let's take this really good and simple sheath off. And then you got to take a look at this. If, you, if you're only listening, um, what you're missing is a really, really beautiful Damascus that uh that murray carter made and then turned into this three and a half inch cutting edge for full four finger grip edc uh fixed blade it's just man it is something else uh he told me the value of it and we are going to be auctioning this knife off unfortunately i i you know i wish he said no this is yours and you cannot do anything but keep it for yourself um because you're just such a great guy. But he didn't say that. He said, uh, I, lo I love what you do. I think what you're valuable is I'm going to send you this awesome knife. I'm like, yes, yes. And you can auction it off. I was like, okay, all right, auction it off. And uh, so auctioning it off means, you know, uh, someone will benefit from it. And I think that will probably be knife rights. Um, but uh, Carter, MS, that means Master Smith. Murray Carter became a Master Smith. Uh, when he came back from Japan, I think that was the very like 2000 or maybe earlier. I can't remember now, but this is just a beautiful knife and super wicked, incredibly sharp. 
So thank you, Mr. Murray Carter, for this very, very generous uh, donation to my channel. Uh, such a beautiful, beautiful knife. I'm going to set this aside on a little red velvet pillow and continue. Uh, okay, so I got some new off-grid knives, and you've seen my, my story, and uh, I love this thing. Holy mackerel. I'm going to put two out here at once. All right. Okay, so this is the Stinger XL from Off Grid Knives. And I have to say, I'm, I'm really impressed with this knife on a number of levels. One of them being, I'd seen pictures of the Blackout version, and I was like, oh, that looks cool. But then when I got them in hand and got them in person, man, I, I just think, the first of all, let's just talk aesthetics. I think they are absolute knockouts. Uh, the blades remind me a bit. They're evocative of daggers. They're also evocative of bayonets, you know, the way they're ground with the with the flat coming forward. Um, they have this great shape. The This profile is very similar to the um, enforcer profile. Uh, there's some difference up here. Um, but basically, the rest of it has a similar profile or almost the same as the enforcer, another knife I love. But this one is nicely contoured it's slender and it doesn't feel boxy uh the the enforcer has this but it's it's a beefier boxier feel to it this is contoured from the top chamfered then contoured and then deeply chamfered here so it just feels so good in hand and it feels more refined uh than than some of my previous off grids. I mean, they're all really excellent, excellent designs and excellently built by Best Tech. But this one, to me, just having it and using it for for a week since I've gotten it, I've been carrying it nonstop. Um, I think that this represents uh, a a step forward for off grid knives. I think they've gone from you know really really excellent to this is a step forward. And I love it. Uh, 154 CM Crucible, it says, which leads me to believe that this is CPM 154. Or is that right? Uh, crucible being Crucible Powder Metallurgy. This one was just uh, won by a gentleman junkie and is going out as soon as I hear a response from him. Uh, very, very nice knife. I am very psyched about this new off-grid knife stinger xl the other thing i'm excited about is i'm a i'm a i'm an intuitive guy and uh with a name like stinger xl well that just means there's got to be an l or an m or an s or something below xl so i i believe maybe with that name xl maybe he's um maybe carry of off-grid is thinking of an edc model uh, that would be awesome. All right, next up from Off Grid Knives is part of the Rapid Strike series. Uh, he sent me two of these to check out. Uh, one of them we're going to be uh, giving away, uh, and that's this one. Um, so this is the Warncliffe version of the Rapid Strike. Rapid Strike is their one assisted open knife, and man alive, does it have power. This, this has its... You know, I don't know. If I really like it. I, I've grown away from assisted open, but there are some knives that are just assisted open and are still awesome, like the Kershaw Leak, for instance. And uh, uh, I used to like the I, I liked the Cold Steel uh, when I tried it. The um, Swift I thought was pretty cool. Uh, there are others, Kershaw Blur. Um, you know, uh, Sog makes some good ones, uh, but. I usually don't think about them, but this rapid strike, uh, it, it's a it's a different feel. It feels like an automatic. Uh, but look at that Warncliffe blade, a really impressive Warncliffe blade. It reminds me a little bit of their earlier model, uh, the Black Stallion, uh, just a little lower profile and um, on, a, on a different frame here. Uh, the handle itself is really nice. It's contoured. So rounded uh, in the hand, but then it's got all of this 3D dimpling, these elongated hexagons uh, interlocking. Oh, they feel really good in hand, especially with the rounded uh, the rounded nature of the whole whole package. 
And then you've got a nice uh, thumb swale right here behind the spine of the knife, uh, spine of the blade, I mean. And then you have some nice jumping up here if you're going to uh, get up there to do some power cutting. And a nice tip, even though it's a rounded, uh, rounded drop point here uh, down to that straight edge, you still have a serviceable tip if you need to thrust. So very cool knife. And then a version of that, a rescue version of that. So here it is in safety orange. Wow, it's really blown out the camera. Uh, it's a safety orange, same uh, hexagons, uh, dimple, same hexa hexagonal dimpling and contoured G10 scales. Uh, nice chunky handle like the 0200, but this one's the rescue model. So it's got a row of wicked teeth here. Um, and to me, I, I, I see that and I think a lot of life to those serrations. Now, serrations in general have a lot of life, uh, but these are so long, they're almost needle-like, audaciously long and thin. And to me, that just means through hard use, those get worn down, uh, but you're always going to have teeth. You're always going to have teeth there. Uh, and then the front third, it's about two thirds serrated. And then the front third is straight edge. Again, that worn cliff, so nice. And this is great for getting under a seat belt. So again, you could use that as a, you know, you can use that tip to thrust if you needed to, but you can still get under a seat belt, say, or, or something else without cutting your, um, you know, the person you're trying to rescue here. And you can use those serrations. This also has a glass breaker on the, on the uh, pommel. Uh, but unlike the other off-grid knives, with the glass breaker, the uh, XL Enforcer. This one is much more low profile uh, and subtle, but definitely will get the job done. It looks a, a lot like a Microtech glass breaker there. All right, so these are the Rapid Strikes, Warncliffe Blackout and Rescue model. And then lastly, uh, this one is so adorable. It's the uh, off-grid baby rhino. Now, you know the rhino. Here, let's do this. There's the rhino. And here is the baby, baby rhino. And then when you put them, you can really see the scale difference, but they are the same design. Uh, I love these baby rhinos. Now, we have the gray one. Um, I showed that off on the channel uh, probably about six months ago. And uh, my wife absconded uh, with that knife, and I get to see it every once in a while. And um, I'm just so happy they now have a blackout version. And um, so I like the gray on gray, but I also really like the blackout version. And uh, so they have this now, and what a great knife. This is a true little big knife. Highly, highly recommended uh, very sharp. This one is in 14C28, and its big brother is in 154. Uh, same width, same thickness to the handle, and that's what makes this tiny little three-finger knife totally manageable and controllable. It's the, the thickness of the handle. All right, so that is the state of the collection. Check out Off Grid Knives. We have a uh, we have an affiliate link. It's uh, one of the few knife companies here that we. Uh, we have accepted affiliate links from uh, because we believe in them and love them so very much. Okay, let's get to it. Drop points. Sometimes, well, I had uh, found myself kind of looking askance at drop points, thinking, oh, you know, they're nice, uh, you know, nice, nice and serviceable. However, you know, for some reason, uh, they don't seem to get my heart racing, this and that. I, you know, unlike a, a nice big swooping, um, recurve or, or a dramatic straight edged, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, worn cliff, like with a big point, that's dramatic to me, eh, but not the drop points. And then I realized, wait a sec, I, I buy drop points all the time and find myself, uh, drawn to them. Um, you know, more than I like to give myself credit for. So I'm going to, I'm going to roll these out here and show you what I'm talking about. First, uh, this one just just came in last week or a week and a half, two weeks ago, and I'm just smitten and I'm bitten. And that's the Finch Knives Buffalo Tooth, a modern interpretation of the buffalo of the uh, sometimes called the elephant toenail, uh, or sometimes called the 
sunfish, a big, fat, broad bladed, um, spear point bladed slip joint. Uh, oftentimes uh, equal ended, sometimes a sleeve board, sort of like this. Um, but the guys at Finch Knives really, really killed this one. Um, and by that, uh, you know, I mean, did a great job. So maybe they birthed this one. And uh, what a beautiful job. I, I've Traditionally, I love the sunfish or the, or the elephant's toenail. I have a couple of uh, marbles and some, you know, Rough Rider versions of it but never really had one that was very special to me. And this one, I, I opened it up and was shocked at how I immediately bonded with it. And I know some of that has to do with this beautiful Cocobolo handle. To me, this really does look like a gentleman's knife. It's a, it, I'll, I'll put it on my dresser next to my nice, uh, you know, uh, patinaed leather wallet and the keys and another knife and, and a pen, and it looks just, I don't know, classic and timeless. Uh, I, I love it. But besides just being cool and making me nostalgic for a time I never lived through, uh, this really awesome QSP-made Finch knife has a really broad, inch-and-a-half uh, broad blade with a, uh, a uh, saber grind that goes about an inch and an eighth up. So it's very, very thin behind the edge. The day I got this, uh, my wife and I were cooking together and I was cutting up uh, veg um, salad fixings, you know, all the vegetables that were going in the salad. And and I just decided to use this. I rarely use folding knives in the kitchen, but it, it was brand new and I was wanted to check out how that blade did. And that big, broad blade is so slicey. Um, did a, an amazing, amazing job. It's 154 cm, so it'll be easy to sharpen and it'll hold its edge and be uh, stain resistant and all of that. So awesome knife. I love this pinch knives, Buffalo tooth. And as you can see, it is a drop point, also a spear point. And by spear point, we usually mean, uh, the same amount of curve and belly above and below the tip sort of in a symmetrical fashion. All right. Next up, uh, this, this one uh, came out years ago, but I only just keyed into it recently. Um, because you know how I am. I, I mean, this is how I am. I'm like, if uh, if everyone thinks it's good, it, it must not be. But of course, I'm almost always wrong. This is the Praxis by Civivi. And you know, when the when the Praxis first came out, it had those goofy like uh, 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 gold liners. And I don't know, Civivis at first were were uh, good designs, but they were doing some stuff that that I just couldn't get behind. Uh, mostly with the liners. But anyway, uh, so it's nice to double back on this design. A lot of people have mentioned this again recently after years of this being out. Like, uh, oh, you know, remember the first couple of models of Civivis? Yeah, they're still, they were amazing too. And uh, this is, uh, when I think of Civivi, I usually think hollow ground, but I always think very thinly ground and thin behind the edge. This is flat ground. Again, that's a nice broad blade. This one about an inch and a quarter. And you know, that with that high height grind and that thin, I mean, this has a, a thin blade stock. It is so incredibly sharp and slicey. And with this finger groove here, I feel like you could probably sharpen it a number of times and it's going to remain really thin and keep a very sharp edge. So this is a 9CR18 MOV, right? Uh, yeah, 9CR18 MOV, which is a pretty nice deal, like substantially nicer than 8CR. Okay, next up, for my good friend Kambu over in Poland and uh, Best Tech Knives, this is the Ornetta. And the Ornetta, I believe, what is this, the Ornetta G? These are in G10. They originally are, uh, like the original Ornetta is a, very nicely milled and sculpted frame lock, uh, titanium frame lock. I had one in my possession for a short time, made a video. It was luxe. It was a very luxury knife. Um, this one is that, but in the $60 price range. Uh, so gives, giving you a much uh, better chance of having one, or if you like the design, but not that much, uh, you can always get this version with D2 blade steel and G10. This looks tuxedo-ish or, or stormtrooper-ish. Uh, I was really psyched about the white G10 when I first got it, but then 
uh, was appalled at how dirty my hands are like every day because whenever I carry this, I usually have to clean it off at home because I don't want it to look in any way dingy. And it's maybe you can't see right here because the light is blasting down on it, but it's kind of dingy. A great drop point blade. Again, very thin and slicey. This one has a nice belly, a continuous belly, and a fuller in the blade for very nice uh, um, flicking actuation. Uh, also, nice flipper on bearings. Very super smooth. Very super smooth. Very smooth. And uh, there's Kombu's Maker's Mark. Let's get that on there for him. Great guy. I've done a couple of shows with him, a couple of interviews. He's an awesome dude. He His designs are exclusive to best tech so he is the ex he is an exclusive designer for best tech all right next up is the cjrb Sirius, and cjrb is the uh more budget friendly line of artisan cutlery um, but the cj i have two C cjrbs and oddly enough two of them in this list uh but they uh I mean, I have an artisan. I've experienced a few artisans like the Centauri. Awesome knife. I have that that uh, that sort of half switchblade, half bally song utility tool thing. That's a, an amazingly engineered and built thing. Uh, but I don't have too much artisan in my life. But I got to say their budget CJRB line is awesome. This is a uh, Ray Laconico design. Let's see his maker's mark there. Our Laconico. I always like it when, when the spine is used for billboarding or maker's marking. Uh, there's the CJRB logo. Oh, no. Wait. Is this an artisan? This is an artisan. Sorry. I think this is an artisan. <laughs> anyway, it's they're, they're the same, basically, same company. But uh, this has nicely contoured G10 handles and with a nice uh, fuller scooped out or nice groove i'm gonna stop saying nice any moment now milled out of the g10 here so when your fingers wrap around they sort of nestle in that trench feels very good i love that uh, sort of strider-esque shape of the sharpening notch very thin blade stock as you can see here and then just thinly ground slicey as all get out this thing is awesome it also comes, oh, this is an AR RPM9, their, their proprietary um, powder metallurgy steel. Also comes in S35VN and Micarta. I wanted that version, but not enough to double the price. So I went with this one, and I'm really happy I did. This was a great pool knife this year. Nice and thin. It fits in the trunks easily, and uh, but enough to remember that it's there before I jump in. And did great with food all summer long next up this thing is i love this 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 has totally won me over this is the beg lighter uh, xl from kaiser and this one is the uh, white mountain knives exclusive this one in red micarta they have a couple of models of g10 now uh, the original one had the uh, tan canvas micarta this red linen is beautiful it's gonna take a long time but that'll patina nicely um this uh, sort of darkened around the pivot. That's where some oil maybe got out. Um, beautiful blade. Very useful blade. Uh, slicey. Very robust, but slicey. You got a nice swedge there on the tip. Great tip. Almost de almost a um, spear point, but a little, little more belly down here than up here. Um, very nicely terraced. Thumb studs and great button lock action. This is my one non-automatic button lock. I used to have the Civivi Cogent. I traded that for uh, the uh, large, my formerly once my large uh, Voyager. Uh, I wanted it back, so the Vaquero. But this thing uh, right here, incredible uh, deep carry pocket clip. Not sunken in, but the flat screws. This is an Azo design. And um, this is a, a great example of, in uh, in pictures, I thought it was a boring blade design, especially when compared to other uh, beg lighters that I had seen. But having this in person, oh man, not at all. This blade is 
is awesome. And that's four inches too. I love a nice four inch blade. So that's the Kaiser Begleiter XL uh, made, made by Kaiser, uh, commissioned by White Mountain Knives. Go over to White Mountain Knives and check out their, uh, their selection. I don't know if they have any left, but they had a couple of new cool variations. Okay, next up, uh, another, <laughs> they're all cool. I'm going to stop saying that too. The Vostede Nightshade. Probably the most unique uh, drop point here. This one emulates a number of blades. It 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 overall ha is, has a bit of a kukri thing because of the overall arch from pommel to tip. But that blade is also very much like a barong, uh, the famed Filipino short sword with the leaf-shaped blade uh, used to devastating effect by the uh, Moros in the south. Uh, so to me, this this knife is very sort of Filipino in spirit, not only in the fact that the blade shape is like a barong, but the uh, angle of the blade to the handle, that downward angle, is a very Filipino feature in a lot of their blades. Uh, incidentally, not so much on the barong, actually, but on most of their other blades, you'll, you'll see that downward presentation. It accelerates slashes, it accelerates cuts, and it puts the tip of the blade uh, in such a position that when you're thrusting, you don't have to cant your wrist uh, to get the point where you need it to go. So a very efficient sort of design. This is not a weapon, though. This is an EDC knife. This would be an awesome weapon if you needed to use it uh, as such. Uh, but it is a really great utility knife for all of the reasons it would make a great weapon. You've got an accelerated uh, uh, cutting angle there. So if, say, you're drawing this uh, constantly or endlessly through cardboard on your work shift, uh, having that downward angle on that belly is going to do you so right. Uh, it's going to save you so much in, in the way of your wrist because you're just going to push down straight. That material is going to gather in this area, and you'll be able to just push cut and push cut. And uh, so very efficient cutter. I've used this one a lot. lot. Oh, sorry about that. I've used this one a lot. And uh, so the blade is a little nasty, but uh, 154 cm blade steel, awesome action. And uh, Vosti just makes great, great knives, uh, whether in the kitchen or in the pocket. I'm digging their knives. I have three of them now. That's Contour G10. They did a great job with that. Uh, the other LT, this is the Vosti uh, Nightshade LT, I forgot to mention, for light and light more in terms of the materials uh, instead of the original, which had M390 blade steel and a uh, micarta and brass handle. This one is uh, 154 and G10. Now they also have one with a gray handle and the 154 CM also a looker next up. This is going to be a shock and a surprise, uh, but it is a Gerber. This is the Sedulo and uh this knife is made in America. It's a Gerber, and it's really good. It is really good. It is very much in the spirit of a uh, a Benchmade with the with the GRN. You know, it's got it's got the very utilitarian look. It's not too flashy, uh, but it's got a very utilitarian look. It's got a full flat ground drop point blade, very nicely ground, very good edge and consistent edge and made in the USA. They have their version of the cross bar lock or the axis lock, and it's pretty good, especially on this model. You've got really, really good and tight lock up here. Um, okay, so this is, just a, uh, this is just a great example, and Gerber needs to do this all the time. Uh, I have commented, I think Gerber is on the way back. Here, look at that. That's a pretty nice clip there. I like the way they do that. Uh, I like the way they ramp it there. Uh, Gerber is on the way back. In the 70s, they were awesome, you know, my and, and beyond. You know, my, my dad had a really cool knife in the 70s uh, by Gerber that I loved. And then I noticed in the 90s, they were really slipping bad. And, you know, they went down a dark hole for a while. Uh, but They've been listening and they're coming back. The first I noticed of them recently was with the Zilch, a great knife, 
a $20 knife that I just picked up because I had $20 rattling around in my pocket and I was an REI. I was very impressed with that knife. I've talked a lot about it on this show that led to getting more of the new Gerbers and being impressed. Uh, but also uh, just two weekends ago, I got a Gerber. I got that Gerber zilch for, for a new friend of, uh, of ours in the neighborhood. So uh, I, I knew him well enough that I knew he wanted uh, or needed a knife. Uh, but didn't don't know him well enough that I wanted to spend more than, you know, than I had to. So uh, got him this knife. He seems to like it. I saw him a week later using it and carrying it. I was like, boom, it's a great feeling. Uh, but yeah, so Gerber on their way back. And uh, yes, I do love that. Made in the United States of America. And uh, this is S35 VN blade steel. Really nice knife. The Sedulo. Next up. Uh, this one really, really does get my heart racing. Uh, this is the Manticore uh, S, I think this is. Uh, but this is the Heretic Manticore. That's the four-inch blade. Look at that recurve. Recurve drop point blade. Just mm -mm -mm. a lovely, lovely curvy blade. Um, if you look at the outer contours, you know, holding it up to the sky or something bright, uh, you'll see that, that they have that has this nice sort of hump on top and the corresponding recurve on the bottom. And then when you look at the, uh, at how the bevels are black and the flats are white and you get that serpentine shape there, not white, but uh, raw metal. It's just so beautiful. It's such a nice blade to look at. I, I, it reminds me of a Walter Brend fixed blade, uh, a, a fixed blade knife. I'd love to have some sort of Walter Brend um, fixed blade recurve. Uh, but so very exciting knife. And this was, of course, my um, my entree into legal automatic knife ownership in the state of Virginia, because as of July 1st, ooh, there's a little nick in that aluminum and that's going to bug me now. As of July 1st uh, in in this state, I'm allowed to carry this. So this was the first knife I, I bought as an auto, as a legal automatic owner in Virginia. Next up. This is a legitimate CJRB. The first one was the artisan that I just mislabeled. Uh, this is the CJRB Scoria, another great pool knife. This this one and the artisan um, Sirius that I showed earlier spent a lot of time. All right, we spent a lot of time at the pool this year. Now we have a great neighborhood pool, and uh, where I'm from, there are a lot of neighborhood pools and. Uh, and ours is tucked away and really nice, and uh, it's kind of a best kept secret, whereas others are kind of overrun. And uh, we just spent a lot of time there this summer and had a lot of friends there and stuff. So every time we go, we bring food and we grill or or whatever. We're always noshing, and um, so always bringing a knife. This is a good one, like the other one, uh, like the artisan, because it's thin, thin and so slicey and sharp. But the whole package is thin. Uh, the handle, this is uh, nice and thin and contoured and light. You do have nested liners in there, very expertly nested. You can barely see them. I mean, you really do have to kind of look inside there. Uh, but still, lots of uh, lightning holes in there, so it's not too bad. This is the one with AARPM9, and uh, just a great knife. Titanium clip very nice clip and uh i think it's a looker i think this is a beautiful knife i think who was it uh, nick shabazz thought it was a very awkward design and I, I i don't see it i don't see it i think it looks like a shark and i think it's graceful and purposeful and kind of simple really like that cjrb scoria okay now next up is one that has been uh in my pocket right alongside the uh the finch Buffalo Tooth, ever since I got it. And that is the Stinger XL by Off Grid Knives. Uh, this is a spear point, dagger point, bayonet ground, combat knife looking folder. That's that's really what this looks like to me. And it is an excellent, excellent knife. Big blade. It's a big knife. Uh, Off Grid is one of those companies that I love because they do a, a variety of sizes. They have your small EDC size things. You saw the size of that that little uh, uh, baby rhino. It's tiny. Uh, and they do other more EDCable sizes. But they also 
veer up into the four inch. And you know what, Carrie, Mr. Orifice, if you're listening, I would go with you into that five and five and a half inch blade realm. Uh, and I think you could take it there, especially with this sort of uh, construction you did with this, with this nice thin slender contouring. It's so nice and comfortable and it feels light, but solid. Not not too light, but you know, nice and solid and a little bit lighter than some of the others. So I am just digging this Stinger XL, you know, way more than expected and pretty much more than uh, most other knives right now. This is just, just, just one of my personal favorites right now. Plus, this is the first off-grid knives knife that has a plate for the um, for the clip on the offside. So kind of a nice little little touch. All right, this next one. You've seen me carrying a lot since ever since I got it, and I still uh, still in the honeymoon phase. I love this thing. This is the Resco Instruments Goose Works uh, Mekong Delta Combat Folder. This is the knife that I thought was American made, and uh, only because I thought it was American made, not because anyone said it was, and uh, or not not anyone from the company anyway. And then I found out it was Best Tech made, and for an instant I was like, oh, it took some of the mystique away. I thought it was made by some salty old frogman in a basement in north carolina near fort bragg or something like that uh but man best tech i'd never complain about best tech making a knife and they did such a beautiful job on this now their their whole thing that i know them for best tech is super modern um caged bearings and flipper action and super luxurious smooth kind of well this is like that but all um washers this is a washer style this is like sort of a u.s style knife in the in the spartan harzi uh tradition in the sabenza tradition um in that it's it's a smooth washer knife that since i've gotten it has be just gotten dropped shut smooth still on phosphor bronze washers and just robust as hell i love this knife I really, really do. I kind of wish I had bought Naf Sergeant's version also that was a bolster lock uh, with Micarta. That would have been cool for me to own. Uh, next up and penultimate in this list is uh, a yet another one I've been carrying quite an awful lot. And this is the K9 Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. And look at that drop point knife. Now, this is a spear point and but it has that beautiful swell uh, towards the tip where the belly is. And I just, I just, to me, this blade shape is the only kind of spear point I want from now on, <laughs> on a, a slip joint knife, because similar reasons as mentioned earlier, first of all, that swell downward, even in the most neutral position, that swell downward uh, presents the blade at a at an angle that will accelerate cutting by gathering material behind that downward angle. Excuse me. And then you add the add the the ergonomic factor of having this dog leg shape. It presents that blade uh, down even more, so you can use that tip without much of a canting of your hands, uh, and it fits nicely in the palm like that. But also, you you're um, you are accelerating that already accelerated downward angle because of the ergonomics so awesome knife just a great knife and coming from a great guy and designer that's bell Be uh, ben belkin and his great company jack wolf knives that's the canine jack that was the august 2022 release okay last up this one a big one this one did win my heart and uh, has done a lot of work for me since I got it. This is the uh, Cold Steel Voyager XL drop point. And this one, I like to call it the Barong uh, because, again, it's, it's like that Filipino short sword that I love so much uh, that I know Lynn Thompson also loves. I'm pretty sure he had that in mind when he designed this. Um, great, great bellied blade you got a tip right near the center line so you, you you know where that tip is most of the time um but you still have a continuous belly and uh a tall 
uh, saber grind. So this thing just just glides through vegetation. I've used this mostly like a machete, just around the house when when clearing vines and doing my my weekly cleanup here at the house. So that's the Voyager XL in Drop Point, a knife I, I that has really won my heart, just like all of these others. Uh, the Finch Knives Buffalo Tooth, the Civivi Praxis, the Best Tech Ornetta, C, uh, the Artisan Sirius, the Kaiser Big Lighter XL, the Vostede Nightshade, Gerber Sedulo, Heretic Manticore, CJRB Scoria, Off Grid Knives, Stinger XL, the Resco Instruments Mekong Delta Combat Folder, the Jack Wolf Knives K9 Jack, and the Cold Steel Voyager XL Drop Point. Don't forget your drop points, ladies and gentlemen, and don't listen to me when I say they're not interesting and they don't get my heart beating. Everything we've shown here today, almost, almost everything, except for the clip point uh, that was in my pocket today. Everything was a drop point, and they're all awesome. So don't listen to me when I say that. Do listen to me when I say check out uh, Sunday's interview show and also be sure uh, to check out Thursday Night Knives. Join us again and join the conversation. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.